Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be reviewing the new episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, this episode was really good, I really enjoyed it. A lot of stuff to do with Thorn, a lot of stuff to do with Nash, and I thought that was really intriguing, and it was one of the most interesting things, obviously, about last episode, towards the end. And it seems like maybe Thorn is gone, but I don't really think he's gone forever, so he may return very soon. But nevertheless, this was a great episode, and I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. So, let's get into it. So, what happened at the start was Camilla and Iris, they sort of team up, they were instructed by the new Mirror Master. And this leads throughout like the whole episode, it's like not a main story point, but... I guess you get the villain of the week, who we'll talk about in a bit, you know, Sunshine. She was alright, but, you know, that sort of led off from what they were trying to do, Camilla and Iris. And I'm not so sure if I like what they're doing. Like, I thought it was cool at first, but then seeing now that you've got these two people, they seem normal to everyone else, but then, like, they're actually, like, faking it, and I'm not so sure about it right now. But I think it's interesting. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, so we start off the episode, we got a reverse flash in the prison cell, and basically they explain that Thorn only built an artificial speed force, no one else has ever done that, and so this is sort of like a lingering kind of idea throughout the episode right until the end when they sort of come up with a new way to create their own speed force so Barry can still have his speed. So Barry's given a sort of speed gauge towards the start, and so it's to see how much speed force energy he uses, so basically he's told him not to, you know, use that much of his powers, like, you know, whether it's flash time, whether it's actually running, or it's like his speed healing, or like speed like thinking, you know, he has to keep it down to sort of a minimum throughout this episode. And so Caitlin and Cisco give it to him, and this is what happens. And so additionally, whilst this is happening, we have Nash is back, but then at the same time we're like, is this Thorn? Or like, where is Thorn? So it's all the wells is inside of Nash because of Crisis, that's what's revealed. And you sort of have to question, is this Reverse Flash or what? Basically, Reverse Flash was in control the whole time in the pipeline, but he was pretending to be Nash and then he winks and you're like, oh shit, I know what's happening right here. So Thorn was Nash the whole time, but then, you know, he goes back to the time machine, tries to time travel to get his powers, but then he's shot by Cisco, and at that point, Barry reveals Oh, I want to use this new version of Velocity, Velocity X. I don't think we've used it before. You know, we've definitely used Velocity 9 and stuff. That's with zoom and trajectory. But this Velocity X doesn't work for him, basically. You know, he attempts to use it in the episode. But, you know, it's not very successful. And so, whilst this is all happening, you have the stuff with Cecile. And she felt very forced in this episode. She's still doing the same old kind of, like oh, this is what someone's feeling. That's like all she's really used for at the moment. She's more of like a sort of device for the narrative so they can understand what each character is feeling. Because like if someone's distressed, she's like, oh, they're distressed or oh, they're angry or they're sort of full of anxiety or they're full of dread or something like that. So I'm a bit tired of the stuff with Cecile if I'm totally honest because she's definitely a device that they're using. But anyway, so this episode's called The Exorcism of Nash Wells, obviously a reference to The Exorcist, and we get a Linda Blair reference in the episode, so I just wanted to point that out because that's one of my favourite films. And so they do proceed to have an exorcism of Nash, they actually go inside sort of his mind, Barry and Cisco go in at one point, but before that you have Earth 719, very random number, eight years ago, Nash has this flashback and you see a young Allegra and so this is a very very cool relationship between them I thought the young actress did a really really good job and so Nash returns with inside his mind this is all within him and he sees Thorn as he sort of feeds on Nash's pain to take control of him and so you have a lot of stuff within Nash's head because he's battling Thorn basically the whole episode as he tries to you know, use his body so he can come back to life, and he has all these other versions of Wells. They are basically more weak, and they aren't as strong as Thorn, so they're not trying to break out into actually controlling Nash's body like him. So we go to Mercury Labs, we got Iris and Camilla working together, 
they are stopped by this sort of invisible matter working for Black Hole, and she actually references Black Hole in this episode, so I don't know, that's a bit out of character because everyone's been so secretive about them, but, you know, we have this decent fight between Killer Frost and her, I mean, some not so good dialogue, but, you know, that's not the whole point of that scene, it was to sort of showcase this light-based matter, and, you know, she is obviously in relation to Dr. Light a bit because she has similar powers, she needs the sunshine and she absorbs that and uses it. And so Barry actually uses Velocity X at this point, he fails and he falls. You get to see blue lightning like Zoom and Barry falls to the ground, so, you know, not a very big success. And so Joe thinks there is something wrong about, like, Barry, but also he suspects Iris in this episode. You get this, like, one moment where he's sort of, like, looking at her, like... Shouldn't you go check up on Barry? Hmm. And I feel like Joe might be the one to find out this isn't the real Iris because he's been getting sort of a bit suspicious recently, and also Barry has as well. And so at the same time we've got Reverse Flash versus Nash, and you find out what happened to Maya, so that is Allegra from his Earth, or you know, whatever Earth, like Earth 719. Whether that's actually where she's from, I would probably guess that is. But I don't know if he's actually from the Earth, because he's a traveler, he's an adventurer, and so, you know, she's taken under his wing, and she dies under his wing, essentially. In this cave, she falls down, and yeah, so Tom Cavanaugh was so good in this episode, he played three different characters, and he's playing these characters, like, against each other, like, talking to himself. thought they did a very good job editing those scenes and stitching them together. And, you know, really big up to Tom, he really carried this episode. And so also Nash has his sort of Linda Blair moment in this episode where Thorn takes over his body and he's connected to this negative speed force again. And he goes almost there as his hands sort of phase into the air, his eyes glow, and it's just a really great moment. And so we have Joe and Singh working together, fighting Sunshine. This was a great scene. You have this sort of chase scene. The camera is very different from normal. It's more like an arrow type wave shooting, you know, these fight scenes, and so you have this chase with Barry running normally, and I thought that was great, I really enjoyed that, but then at the same time, you don't have a very good actor playing Sunshine, where she's delivering some really kind of cliche moments, but nevertheless, that scene was great, and I have to put that down to, you know, the cinematography, the direction, and also Barry, like Grant, and Additionally, Jesse L. Martin, because they did a great job in that scene. And so, at the same time, you got Sunshine being shut off because they're, you know, shutting out the sunlight. So, Barry wears these cool glasses, they arrest her. And yeah, so that was a really cool moment, especially seeing Barry in those glasses. I was like, what the hell is going on here? This is cool. And at the same time, we've got the CCPD, like people like Joe and Singh, they're sort of suspecting that they've got a mold. Who is it? I don't know, I kind of got the gist that they're talking about, like, maybe Iris, because she keeps on stealing stuff, and maybe that's what they were referencing to, but I don't know as of right now. And so additionally, Barry and Cisco are in Nash's mind, like I said earlier in the video, and so they're fighting Thorn as Thorn tries to manipulate both Barry and Nash, using their feelings and their sort of errors with inside of them, their sort of emotional errors to control them and take over basically and so Thorne's hands start vibrating as he gets more and more into sort of Nash's mind and he uses Nora against Barry, Barry starts crying and essentially they both succeed and they repel Thorne out of Nash and so you've got Maya who died one year ago, Nash faces his memory as she dies and so he basically takes over from what Thorn was doing and the red lightning of Thorn streaks throughout the room and Thorn disappears and it sort of overloads and surges into the sky and it was a really great moment seeing all of that so Nash is kind of overloaded. Nash cries and Cecile is affected and it again the Cecile stuff feels really fake but anyway so Crisis on Infinite Worlds is what he references it to and so they're still in his head, you've got all these different versions of, of Wells, so, you know, Harry's not gone or anything, like you see him in the episode, and it's it's very good. So Nash leaves for now, I reckon he'll be back, and so basically he's going to get a second chance to talk more to Allegra and to get to know her, essentially. And so Barry, Cisco, and Caitlin, towards the end of the episode, this is like one of the final scenes, 
they talk about like how they're going to manufacture this new speed force and so they reveal that they're going to use Nora's journal because Nora was told how to create a speed force via reverse flash this was a fantastic reveal and this is something that I'm really looking forward to seeing all of this to do with creating a speed force and so the ending scene you get to see the new version of Mirror Master as they get the device and so this is part of her like plan to get out I guess and so I have to question is she the main villain it seems like they're setting her up for a big big reveal what do you guys think about that so that's about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy it please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.